Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Thanks for joining us again. So we're going to have another beautiful uh, Sunday lineup here. I hope everyone's okay with the time change. <laughs> we're just adjusting to it ourselves. Um, we are going to start with uh, with uh, Calico and Beyond the Body, but we do uh, have a quite a lineup today. So I thought we could just run through. So at uh, at ten forty five. Uh, CDT, we're going to have Access Miracles with Dan and Marie. 11.30, Come Into the Light with Anne. 12.15, Song of Prayer with Emily. And 1 o'clock, The Last Step with Jeffrey. So stay tuned with us. And uh, without further ado, we'll <laughs> take you over to Beyond the Body with Calico. Okay. And it's a special day today. It's uh, the Resurrection Day. Um, happy Resurrection Day, everybody. Um, in the world, it's called Easter, and um, the focus is a little different with A Course in Miracles. The focus is not on the body. Uh, the focus is on the mind. And um, so the resurrection that we're all going for here is the resurrection of our minds. And um, you know when you're needing a resurrection of your mind, when you're in a blame or complain mode about somebody or something. And I had an interesting thought come up this morning and on the way over here I just shared with my mighty companions it, this thought kept rolling around and it was about wanting to make someone wrong and I didn't need to give names I didn't need to give details I just said you know got a reoccurring thought going on right now and it, I don't need to take up space in my head and that's really all I needed to do in the presence of mighty companions that can hold that space and um, hold the love that we all are. So um, today, given it is Resurrection Day, um, we have a special guest, um, at least in my heart, uh, a, a resurrected being um, that is a goddess of love. And um, I wanted her to share, because one of the things we do in community is to use function to keep us focused when we're having difficulty looping in our minds uh, one way or another. And this woman, um, I join with her on so many levels. <laughs> she's a gift from God for me. Um, she's so, shown me grace and um, I've been joining with her every day and it's, it's my blessing. And she's gonna share with us how she has held the light when perhaps life didn't look like it was worth light lighting. So I hope Lila's out there. Lila, are you here? <laughs> She's not there. Okay, we have some technical difficulties going on. Lila didn't show up today. So, all right. <laughs> this is live TV, folks. This is what it looks like. <laughs> um, then I'm going to share about function because I know function and I know how to lift my head out of the dark places that it goes. And this is beyond the body. And this is about Jesus showing us the way to do it. Jesus's life was the, the example. It wasn't the body. It was what he did with his mind. That was the important piece. Um, and that's what this day is all about. Can we, are we willing to resurrect our mind from making situations or people wrong or right even? Um, can we not place blame? Can we not complain? You know, even I posted this a while back on my Facebook page. Um, can you go 24 hours without complaining? It'll change the world. Your world will look completely differently. And it really is, that is what A Course in Miracles is talking about. Um, where in our minds are we not holding light and love? Where are we complaining? Where are we finding fault? Um, and one of the things I wanted to share with Lila today, and I'll just, because we've been talking all week, I'll, I'll just sit in for Lila. Um, she was in community for a long time. She's now living in Hawaii, but she was living in community for a long time. And um, she had a great story of sitting on the porch at the monastery in, outside of Camas, Utah, and um, 
she and David were sitting on the porch and they looked down into the, the canyon, the, the empty field below, and, and David said to, <laughs> to Lila, I see a stage. <laughs> and Lila said, so do I. And it was a, a moment when Strawberry, the Strawberry Festival that we have coming up in August, was born. And the next thing David said to Lila was, I see you taking this as yours. And um, she, and this is where yes is so important. Where are you saying yes? Where are you not saying yes? Where are you withholding a yes? Because it's through that freedom is found. And it's by holding back and going, no, 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 it can't look like that. It, it's not like that. That's where we get stuck. And that's where we get looped into negative thinking. And that's not helpful. So Lila at that moment said yes. And she has some great parables about working on the first strawberry festival. Uh, Lila was, um, we come from the same generation. And she uh, was at Woodstock. I might admit that I was traveling cross country back and forth selling drugs at the time and I was too busy to go to Woodstock. But that was another lifetime and I've forgiven myself for it. <laughs> but Lila went to Woodstock and, and so she had this experience of, of being at a big festival. And so she was the person to say yes on that porch with David and take on the festival. And she didn't know how to do it and there was, a, Kristen has shared in a Facebook Live um, not too long ago about walking into a room where Lila was during the pre, you know, phase of the festival. And she was, she had scraps of paper everywhere in the room, just little piles of paper. And she was sitting on the floor. And Kirsten walked in and said, I'm here to help. And it's like Lila didn't miss a beat. She knew that help would be sent. She trusted the process. She knew it was hers to, to sit. And as she, she said so beautifully this week, she said, it was my job to take notes. I'm here to take notes. And so sitting on the floor within, with all these piles of paper around her, she took notes, knowing that help was coming. And it came in the form of Kirsten, Kirsten at that time. And she didn't doubt. She kept going into, this is what's been given me. This is my yes. This is my access to heaven. And it's not what I'm doing. It's how am I holding it in my mind? Am I making it wrong? Am I complaining about it? Is it, is, does it not look right? People aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, she never fell into that. And that's why she's, she's quite frankly, a, a huge role model for me. And I'm so happy to have been able to join with her this past week, and now I'm sharing her parables. But it doesn't matter on the body. I could be Lila. I am Lila. <laughs> and, and she's just allowing me to speak through her um, in this form right now. And uh, so the Strawberry Festival, I just want to give it a plug, is happening this August in Utah. And uh, go to livingmiracles.org and you can find a tab in there somewhere that will link you back into the festival and find out details of it. I do understand that housing is somewhat limited at this point because um, there, there's lots of camping available, but if you want a bed in a bunk room or if you want a room, you'd better call soon because those are going quickly. And this festival I really see as kind of a, a testament to saying yes. And, Lila and David sitting on the porch uh, at the monastery and seeing a stage, you know, and that's listening to the guidance from Holy Spirit. It doesn't look necessarily look like we think it should look like, just like doing this program. This is my yes. And, um, and it's interesting because Lila didn't want to co-host this program. I had somewhat of a little breakdown early on because I really thought it was going to be her and I. And it's interesting that she's not on this program because it's Lila's way of saying, this is your yes. And, and she kept telling me, it's this program, Beyond the Body, is my strawberry festival. 
and we all have something and sometimes it looks like and it has for me a lot um, house cleaning you know cleaning a toilet doing the dishes those are yeses too am i able to take this this state of mind this holy state of mind into those functions because they're god-given functions everything is god-given function um, it was and my introduction into this was some functions that didn't look there was an interesting comment i um i'm a member of the prayer and support team i'm just going to be plugging <laughs> living miracles functions um, i'm a member of the prayer and support team for living miracles and i posted a facebook live this week and there was a gentleman that that came on and commented that you know there's too many problems in life you know a course in miracles doesn't work and all I can say is the problems are the access out. And I got this early on with a foreclosure on a, a beautiful piece of property I owned in the mountains um, for a decade and uh, thought it was going to be a retreat space for, for doing spiritual gatherings. And unfortunately, my script included a foreclosure. And... Um, I had to do some forgiveness work to forgive a big bank who I severely hated. And I did see it a problem at, at one time. But what I've really come to learn is it was a gift I was giving myself. Can you forgive this? Because if you can forgive this, you can have access to the ultimate freedom, the ultimate joy in life, which is why we're here, to be joyous. Our function is to be happy. And we're given, we give ourselves our scripts to do that. And if you're in an ugly divorce, take that one on. Can you learn to be joyous in this? Can you forgive a partner that you find unforgivable? This is the access to beyond the body. And our function is to forgive. It's to take on uh, those situations that seem like we can't go through, we can't handle, we can't do ourselves. It's like, well, we don't have to, but we do need to pray and trust that Holy Spirit's going to guide us through whatever we're needing to do with it. So, yeah, function. It's all about function. What are you doing today to resurrect your mind? And if you find yourself kissing bunnies or coloring eggs, great. And if you find yourself having horrible thoughts about people in your life, great because neither one of them is better than another. They both have give us access to raising our mind with Holy Spirit, to find love, to find joy, to find, to find peace. And that's what the scripts are. And they're all written because we came into this life looking for more than everything. And the reality is there is not more than everything. So these scripts are just our access back to everything. And um, that's why I'm, I, I love A Course in Miracles. It, it saved my life, um, and it made the lives of those around me that don't exist a lot happier. <laughs> I wasn't blaming them nearly as much. Um, yeah, so is Lila on by any chance? Just now that I've shared her whole song, she's still not here, huh? God bless her. <laughs> Lila, we'll talk later. <laughs> um, well, I'll give a plug for my thir the 30 day program. Um, I, if you're looking for a function and this is okay. All right. Holy spirits kind of giving me some downloads here. Um, on the prayer and support team, one of the things that we're gifts that we give to everybody is um, function. That most people that call prayer and support are feeling alone or they're feeling unhappy. Those are the two reasons that people tend to call prayer and support. And in our team, we are there to serve by giving you a way to join so that you're not feeling alone join with mighty companions that can hold you in the light and the love that you are. And, and you can find happiness by doing them. And one of the, the um, gifts, Living Miracles, by the way, 
has lots of things to offer. I, I was amazed. I, I wrote up the list for our prayer and support team, and I had over 12 items listed that people can participate in. And one of them is kind of near and dear to my heart. And Jeff, uh, who sets up this program uh, with the Zoom room every day, it's also something that he's very, very involved with, um, is a 30-day Unwind Your Mind experience. And I invite you to join it. It's free, so you can't use that excuse to not do this. Um, all you have to do is livingmiracles.org, go to Circle of Support, and you can find it right there. Um, and with that being said, you click on it, you say yes, you join. And every day, it starts, the next one starts April 9th. And every day, uh, for 30 days, you'll get an email that has David's parables, quotes, videos. It'll have something of inspiration to kind of focus your day around. And in addition, that's not all folks, it's kind of like there's free toasters everywhere in this program. You sign up for the program, you'll get into the private Facebook group, um, which is on, it's on Facebook and it's a closed group. So you can share and express a lot without being seen by the public. And there's a lot of beautiful miracles that happen in this group. Uh, profound, profound things have happened and we've only been doing it for a couple of times now. And um, so I invite you to join that group and start sharing what's troubling you. Where are you finding problems in your life? and allow the mighty companions that are available on that program to help lift you out. Um, and not all that you get with your 30 day unwind your mind experience. Jeff also does a virtual movie every week. So you get to, through a Zoom room, will join in a free movie that is also geared to kind of lift you up and, um, oh, they're giving me, <laughs> Kristen's with me. Okay, they've got, oh man, there's way too much going on here for someone with ADD. Okay, we have got, Kristen's here also, and Kristen and I have, have worked together on Unwind Your Mind, many, oh my God, we've done lots of social media stuff together, and, and um, yeah, and you're very familiar with the Unwind Your Mind program, as well as a lot of the other gifts that we have to give through living miracles. And so maybe this day is just taking a little turn to give you some options for function because through function, you can lift yourself up. Yeah, I have no idea why I'm sitting here actually. <laughs> but I'm gonna go with it. This is our Lila. <laughs> no, uh, actually what I was feeling really inspired by was a conversation you and I were having you know, was just yesterday or the other day, we were talking about commitment. And I just feel like, um, yeah, it's been so inspiring watching your journey, actually, because there's there's been these strong themes of sickness. And it's been very, very inspiring watching you just recommit and recommit and recommit to the healing and the deep prayer. And we were just swirling the other day. I mean, so loud, <laughs> just <laughs> laughing and laughing. But um, yeah, I, I wondered if maybe you wanted to share a little bit more about that, like the way through the doubt and the uncertainty and really anything else yeah. is just recommitting. And it is a recommit. And it's not even a recommitting. It's, am I willing to recreate myself um, on a moment by moment basis? And it was again, like coming, we were driving over here together and, and I was in the back seat and I just said, okay, I just need to say this. I had a negative thought about somebody. And it was like, and you didn't need to say anything. And it was me willing to, to take on, that's not gonna be helpful having that thought is not going to be helpful. And it's like in every moment, it's kind of like, and this is, and if you're in pain, oh, I can't tell you the power of this one. And also Spiri, not to mention another freebie that we have, Spiri has helped me with symptomatic pain. So if you have a headache, if your neck hurts or low back or you're sneezing, do a Spiri on it because you can put a symptom into Spiri and it can access to a belief system that you have and it's profound healing. And it's like, and that's really, 
That is the access to heaven. And that's why we're here. And, I, and it's not about what the form looks like. And I read this piece at the end that's in the obstacle obstacles to peace. The body is an obstacle to peace if we use it that way. If we're using our bodies to get somewhere or be something, and I must say, I, <laughs> I tried losing five pounds my whole life. Then it went up to 10 pounds and then 50 pounds, and we're not even going to go there anymore. I don't need to lose weight anymore. This is the perfect vehicle that I gave myself, I gifted myself to wake up with. So it is my script to be happy with. And these are symptoms that you can take to Spiri. And I, I, for me, Spiri and the Instrument for Peace were key. Yeah, I think they're all really valuable tools to like very practically to help you move through whatever, whatever you're experiencing that's not, that's not profound happiness. Right. And um, yeah, again, I guess I just feel inspired by this idea of commitment and prayer actually is what's coming through. I remember um, David sharing last night in a movie gathering that we were having here, uh, public gathering at La Casa de Milagros. And um, he was just sharing like, you have to really want to get in touch with your communication device. And so like, these are all fantastic ways and, you know, just it's what comes through mm -hmm. to, to be able to extend in a very practical way how to get in touch with your communication device, being the Holy Spirit or your intuition. But um, yeah, again, that's just where my inspiration is in joining mm -hmm. with you and just because I've seen that happen so much in, in our assignment. We've had, <laughs> uh, we were really joined for quite some time. <laughs> I'm going to share very, something. Very I'm going to share something and I love you. Oh. You don't know how much I love her. <laughs> and it didn't always start out this way. Go for it, Calico. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, we were joined in function initially, and I don't even remember, I don't know, a year ago. ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. We have an extension function, actually. We were really joined in social media, which is you know, of course, right. all about extending, extending, extending the message. And it's, it comes, you know, has to really come from this authentic place in order to really be felt. And I mean, that's really what you want for yourself as well. So we have this function, which is extending the message, and then all of this healing and just, you know, Lots massive of amounts of goodness. You see, I see, I see Kristen as, as one of my saviors that I gifted myself. Totally. And I adore her but it didn't start out that way. Initially there was, I was conflicted. And um, <laughs> I don't remember saying this, but someone pointed out that I did say this because we're, we're committed to being open and honest and speaking about communication, it means being rigorously honest. And for the most part, when it comes up, you don't wanna. You know, the last thing you wanna do is share what's really on your mind. But, and keep going towards your brother and keep going towards your brother because your brother is the freedom from whatever su suffering you have and um I, I had a lot of suffering and then i brought you into my script yeah that's something we talk quite a lot about here actually and um i'm just even reflecting on this morning when um the whole team here just joined and what feels so powerful to me whenever i can really get in touch with it whenever it feels very present and always grateful for the reminders is that it's really about the relationships because every relationship you have is your relationship with God. Yeah. So just continuing to go towards your brother and knowing that whatever the shows look like, Oh, Lila's not here. Okay. Keep going. Like, do we all feel, do we all feel the spirit here with us? And the answer is yes. And yeah, I just, yeah. Going a little blank on that in a moment, but, but really that, that it's about the relationships yeah. and that they don't always look like, um, like rainbows and butterflies, like there's a tremendous amount of healing that happens to really feel the connection consistently. Right. And um, in fact, the bigger us. the bigger the upset, the bigger the breakthrough, and the bigger the miracle. And um, I rem someone said I don't remember saying this, but someone said at one point early on, <laughs> Kristen and I, I said I would rather chew my arm off than join with Kristen. <laughs> And, you know, the reality is, yes, I remember the upset, and it was my upset. It had nothing to do with her. It had absolutely nothing to do with her. And the, the beauty was that she was committed to me like I was committed to her. And we stuck like glue. 
we didn't let go. Yeah, we just kept going towards it. And yeah, you know, talk, talk, yeah. share. And really, it always had to come from this place of softness because there's yeah. like in every assignment that you have, you know, whether it's very clear, okay, we're working on a project together, or if it's just somebody that you encounter in the street, or really, which, however, these encounters yeah. happen, there's a gift that you have for one another. And I know that Calico's gift for me has just been this deep softening, actually, like coming from a place of like, it's about getting the project done. It's about really everything but love. And then there's one who, who's given me to continue to break those walls down. And that's right. exactly what's, what it's looked like. Right. And, um, you know, even continues to look like as we just yeah. continue to go deeper together, but it's really been very profound and, the, this assignment has lasted months and months and months and here I am sitting with her now and we get to share the miracle of it. And it will continue. I'm, I'm, I, I'm being given a high sign here, <laughs> but I just, I need to share that this is really on, you know, on the road, on the, on the battleground <laughs> or the playing field as the case may be. Um, this is what it looks like. And this is the, I mean, I'm blessed to be in community but again, we have many ways that you can join with Living Miracles and, and join with Mighty Companions. And so I just, I, I give you the opportunity to uh, go to livingmiracles.org and find out the many ways that you can join because the breakthroughs are profound. And um, yeah. Yeah, so it's worth it. It's totally worth it. Totally doable and totally worth it. Well, thanks for letting me crash your party, Calico. <laughs> Anytime, babe, anytime. Um, I just want to, I love reading this from the Obstacles for Peace to end the program with because um, it is what Beyond the Body is about. This is how you do it, and this is what Beyond the Body is about. Yet would I offer you my body, you whom I love, knowing its littleness, or would I teach that bodies cannot keep us apart? Mine is of no greater value than yours. No better means for communication of salvation, but this body is not its source. No one can die for anyone, and death does not atone for sin, but you can live to show that it is not real. The body does appear to be the symbol of sin, while you believe that it can get you what you want, while you believe that it can give you pleasure, you will also believe that it can bring you pain. To think, you could not be, could, to think you could be satisfied and happy with so little is to hurt yourself. And to limit the happiness that you would have calls upon pain to fill your meager store and make your life complete. This is completion as the ego sees it. For guilt creeps in where happiness has been removed and substitutes for it. Communion is another kind of completion which goes beyond guilt because it goes beyond the body. So find some way to resurrect your mind today and go out and be joyous, color an egg, kiss a bunny. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Till next, next time. <laughs> it was just a tiny mad idea at which the Son of God remembered not to laugh. We built an altar made of hate and fear. We let the ego live on our behalf. Mm. Thanks, Calico. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. <laughs> Expect the unexpected today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, beautiful theme, like starting off with going beyond the body. What better way to start a day about resurrection? So I know for myself, I'm just really feeling this morning that theme of life. I think I woke up with one one prayer in my mind is just, I just want to keep on choosing life, like true life in my mind today. Because um, I woke up with so many facebook easter messages that were all conflicting some talking about you know sacrifice and everything is like wow so many different messages out there what can i hold on to in my mind and i just felt like yeah just choose life choose true life that we're really all joined in uh, eternal life 
And so that's my, my prayer today, and I, I join you all in that prayer. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so, next up. Yeah, next up we've got Dan and Marie with uh, Access Miracles, and they'll be joined by a special guest today from Camus. So um, we'll see you in about 10 or 15 minutes. Joined by Dan and Marie now for Access Miracles. So we'll just cut straight to Dan and Marie. Hi, I'm Marie. I'm Dan, and we welcome welcome you to Access Miracles. Yes, we're very excited about this because we're interviewing our first non-premise person, <laughs> for lack of a better word. She's actually in our metaphysical center in Camas, Utah. And this is really an adventure for us because we don't really know her that much. Although the times that I, I have been in function with her have been so memorable that I was really excited to be able to have the opportunity to uh, bring forth her presence here and to share what she's like and how she fulfills this Christ calling that she is in, in Living Miracles community. I have a few parables of why she is that presence for me, but um, I guess the most memorable one for me is that it wasn't even so much really the words that she says, um, it's her way of being. When I landed in Canvas, Utah for, as a resident, she was sharing the house rules with me and it was very succinct, it was very thorough, and at the end of it, she said, you know, this is your home now. It wasn't the words. It was just how she said it. This is your home now. And I felt welcomed. And I felt seen and I felt held. And in everything that she does, the thing that comes to mind for me is there's a purity of purpose in her precision. It's in her emails. It's in her communications. She doesn't talk a lot about she doesn't talk a lot unless, unless it is for a function. Oh my God, hi Utah, I see you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes, and this morning while I was meditating and I was really um, joining with her in mind, I think part of the reason I'm so moved by her is because, oh my God, I'm going to lose it now. But, you know, like God is in the presence that we necessarily see but we feel God's presence. And Utah is always behind the scenes and she's doing things in tech, you know, in code. And even when she's visiting here, she doesn't really talk much. But her presence, I can feel. It's just filled with love and, and devotion and clarity. So, without further ado, Dan will be asking the questions. Here's Utah. Duncan and Camus. <laughs> Hi, Utah. Hey. So, we know miracles are seen in the light. And the second miracle principle is? <laughs> miracles as such do not matter. What matters is their source, which is far uh, beyond evaluation. I know you were excited about that miracle principle. So all our questions for this morning is going to be anchored in that. And so we want to know, why were you excited about that, that miracle principle mm -hmm. in terms of your life and your calling? Well, I got your email and um, just reading through it, I was in prayer the whole time, just reading every paragraph that you wrote. And at the very end, you mentioned the, this this uh, second miracle principle and um, that was really the only thing in the email that really sparked me and my heart is mm -hmm. um, yeah like you said it's the the source beyond beyond miracles that that is the inspiration for everything so that is my inspiration I want to be in touch with um, the source that inspires all the miracles. Um, I want to line my mind up with, with that because that's where my peace and joy are. So, yeah, and I feel like I've 
just in the past, I don't know, three or four weeks, there's just been so many miracles. And <clears throat> yeah, I feel like my connection with the source that inspires the miracles has become stronger just in the past few weeks. So yeah, this feels really timely and very inspiring. Yeah. So a brief bio about how you found yourself in Living Miracles, perhaps? <laughs> um, well, I guess I've been here just over four years, maybe four and a half years now. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I was studying the course very uncommittedly for a while before that, for a few years before that. And um, I my mind seemed to get kind of overshadowed. The happiness that could have been there was seemed to be overshadowed by all the <clears throat> things in my life, like uh, living on my own and just trying to even figure that out. Um, that was tough. So, yeah, I don't know. I just found myself filling out the application for uh, coming to a community. And it was all really miraculous because one piece in the application that I remember clearly is a requirement that you should have come to a retreat or some kind of event with Living Miracles before filling out the application. But I saw that and somewhere I thought that doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I'm gonna fill this out anyway. It feels important. This feels like it's my step right now. Oh well, yeah. I filled it out and it was, I loved filling it out actually. It was like, I felt like I was just being done through. Mm -hmm. and it was received and I landed in Hawaii and now I've, my life now. <laughs> had you had you met David Hoffmeister uh, previous to that at all or was it, had you heard of him in any way? Oh yeah I mean I yeah so I was studying the course and the only teacher that I was listening to was David mm. and others from from Living Miracles like Armal at the time or Lisa yeah 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 so no I hadn't met him but I had had some calls with him I would call him sometimes when I was really feeling bad and needed a miracle. And uh, sometimes he wouldn't be available immediately. And I would receive the miracle anyway, because I made the call mm. and I asked, <laughs> I asked for help. So by the time he would call me back, I'd be like, David, I don't need you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm receiving the miracle. <laughs> the little willingness, right? Yeah. You, you had mentioned that you had a, you felt that you had uh, some miracles happen in the last couple of weeks. Is there anything mm -hmm. you can share with us about that? <clears throat> well, um, yeah, um, I feel like the thing that kicked it off for me was a dream I had, which was similar to what Kirsten was sharing in one of her Facebook lives recently that she had a dream about Jesus and yeah um I don't I don't dream about Jesus like I don't I this is not I think like usually when I pray uh it's more to the Holy Spirit because it's more I don't know you know ethereal like there's not a form to it so somehow my mind could connect with that more easily but I had this dream and I was basically just spending a day with this man in some town and he was showing me things and we were walking around together and then he was helping these people in town and he was so happy. <laughs> and then um, when I woke up, I, it was just still in my mind and I thought this was different and I couldn't really pinpoint at first why it was different, but it just kind of like, settled in like I think this was Jesus mm. and that really just I don't know made it even more alive in my mind even beyond that like there was the dream and then days and now still like this is still in my mind scenes from that dream like putting my face on his chest or putting his hand mm. on my cheek mm. like um, yeah mm. I feel like that was a I don't know it was monumental in my experience, just in my journey, that dream, because um, 
yeah i feel like since that since i had that dream i feel like um like this sense of loneliness i didn't even know was there is not there mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. i've had this <clears throat> now with jesus which which is what the whole course is all about it wants us to get in touch with jesus or the holy spirit have a real relationship and i feel like I, I don't know i was blessed with it all of a sudden i don't know <laughs> well, I think, yeah i think what i really love about what you just shared in that in that is that the miracle isn't in the form it's exactly the second miracle principle it's about the source like that's what i hear for for that parable that you just shared like that it's the experience of it in your mind and how it's carrying you forth and form in your function day to day and feeling that kind of companionship with Christ in your mind. So, wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I feel like since the dream, um, in my mind, my desire to I even had this prayer. I don't know if it was before that or after that. And I'd never heard words like that come to my mind before, but the prayer that I had one night was replace me with you. And that was wording that I hadn't, yeah, I wouldn't think of that. So I don't think that came from me, but that's, that's kind of been like my modus operandi since for the past few weeks, like, okay, like I don't really want to have any input <laughs> because you, you can just work through me and everything that you will do through me will be where my happiness is. Wow. That's beautiful. So, so that, 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 that statement replace me with you. That was, that was what you heard from Jesus. Well, I was just in meditation one, one night, just, you know, practicing my course lesson for the, for the day. And the memory, I think it must have been after the dream because the memory from, of the dream came just back really strongly into my awareness. And yeah. Um, yeah. it was just such a desire to like, n not my will, yours. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I really, really like that you said that because I think one of the things that is the experience of living in community is, you know, we do everyday things that everybody does outside of here, but <clears throat> it's in the doing and holding that space with Christ, with spirit, that we get to undo all our self-concepts and, you know, our preferences and, and getting really present to the undoing of the, the small self. And what I hear with what you just shared is that that's exactly what you're asking for in, in, in full measure. It seems, you know, and, and I think that's why Christ comes into your mind in your dream. And yeah, yeah. And I, I have to say, like, that's my experience of you even before this is that there's just this, you know, I, I don't feel any kind of people pleasing in you at all. You know, like I said, it's just, just this precision, which makes me feel safe, truly. The experience I have with you is a feeling of safety and of love because you're not treating me as a person. So that, I feel that's the gift that you keep providing for us, for me, for all of us, actually. Hmm. There's more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that this is an experience that somehow you can share with our audience that, that, that uh, in, in other words, that they can actually experience for themselves or is it just an answer to a prayer and so highly individualized that that there's no common ground necessarily that other than a deep devotion i mean any feelings along those lines mm. well i mean miracles are natural so when they don't happen something has gone wrong we know that from the course so uh i feel like the common ground is um, the desire, the mm. desire for a new way, a different way from what we made up. <clears throat> um, 
and there's healing to go through seemingly on this journey there seems to be you know, some kind of healing timeline that's involved but with having a desire for like authentic healing i think miracles are just waiting around every everywhere every corner every under the pillows everywhere <laughs> Would you say that you had a dark night of the soul that's made you reach out and say, there's got to be a better way? Was there that kind of a pivotal moment in your life? Uh, my whole life? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. like even since childhood, like there were uh, like a few years in my childhood that I felt like were just mm, really joyful. Like, I just felt like I was free. And then, you know, this is the same with all of us. Something happens. It doesn't mm -hmm. even have to be anything monumental. But uh, mm -hmm. for me, it seemed like when my sister moved out, she was nine years older than me. So she was always my companion when I was growing mm -hmm. up. But when she moved out, and I didn't realize that until way later. But when she moved out, I, I was all of a sudden on my own. My parents worked all day long. And I was just on my own, having to kind of like figure out how to live by myself. So, kind of like since then, life wasn't so great for me. So, like, there was always something uh, that felt like this This doesn't feel like it's supposed to feel this way. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so when, when I moved to the States when I was 18 or 19, you know, that's when I kind of felt a little more free to do and explore things. And I got into spirituality and yeah, I explored various different um, spiritualities. You know, I got into new age and Buddhism and uh, Taoism and um, healing modalities like energetic healing, things like that. But it just never really seemed to be of lasting interest, something my interest just kind of went all over the place. So, yeah, since I've come here, uh, there's just been a real focus. And, um, yeah, I usually can't stick with stuff. I'm not one that usually can stick with stuff. But now I've been here for four and a half years or something like that. So, and it's not getting boring or like, <laughs> you know, like I need to get out of this, which is how I felt with my jobs. So. That's so, yeah, that's so funny that you said. I answered the question. I don't remember what the question was. No, you did. No, you did. It was beautiful. And, and I think it's funny that you said that because when I think of you, I think you're, I think of you as commitment. It's so funny that you said you could never stick with anything before. But I mean, my, the thing that I feel for you is how committed you are. It's, it's awesome. Mm. Yeah, I guess I didn't really find uh, something worth to commit to. And mm. now I, you know, once you get on the, on the, on the path with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, it's like you get to experience that it works. So the commitment for that just naturally comes in. The other you thing say, I was doing before, on. just there was no place for commitment because it didn't work. Yeah, yeah. You had said that in our previous conversation uh, uh, just the other day that uh, you really hadn't read the course and that this year was the first time that you're actually well, doing. I have read the course, you know, I've read the course, the workbook lessons. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> the workbook lessons were always like, okay. uh, <laughs> I got so far into the book and then it's like, yeah, no, I can't keep going. <laughs> it's funny because I've talked to other people about this, like JP, for example, who I work with a lot. And I would talk to him about, you know, I just can't seem to finish the workbook. And he's like, that's so funny because when I started, I can't stop. And I'm like, huh. Okay, what is, what is that? <laughs> so yeah, I made a commitment this year to uh, do the workbook for the first time ever. <laughs> no, I think... Long term resident in this community. And not having... No, I think it's awesome because I think that just, that just exposes the fact that, you know, there is no right, wrong path and definitely your devotion supersedes in my mind, in my ex experience of you supersedes doing the workbook lesson at least once from, from beginning to end. I mean, to me, you're like a work walk and workbook lesson. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, that's my experience of you. I mean, it's great that you're doing it, but I think it gives a gentleness for all of us who haven't done all the workbook lessons to see that your devotion, your devotion is what the practice is. <laughs> 
you. Mm -hmm. For all of us who haven't done all the workbook lessons, yes, there you go. Yeah. Here it is. It's not about that form. There was something I wanted to ask about um, when you felt that for the first time maybe that you really started hear, hear, hearing Holy Spirit, uh, getting the guidance or, or some sort of direction. Was it a gradual thing or was it kind of immediate? Hmm. That's a good question. I think it was probably gradual and immediate at the same time because, you know, we can all hear <laughs> guidance, but we don't really want to. Mm -hmm. So in a way, like, um, yeah, I think I, I, there were, I think, you know, before I came to community, there were certain times where it was really clear what, what I needed to do. Like, okay, I need to leave this job. I'm going to hand in my two week notice because uh, it's just not working anymore like it's not it's too jarring for my mind so I switched uh, careers and <clears throat> or yeah even with relationships like okay now this is time <laughs> to end now move on something um, yeah. but I think uh, once I think it became more apparent what guidance was once I actually came into community here mm -hmm. um, because I, I was getting reflections of what you're mm. hearing is also what I'm hearing. And that's mm. always really great, especially when you first start out like practicing hearing um, the Holy Spirit. It's really great when you have reflections, mm -hmm. especially ones that, that you know, seem to be on this path much longer than you. Um, for me, that was really helpful. Like, um, you know, when I first um, came into this community, I was in Hawaii. And one of our properties there and Jason was there Jason Warwick and Armel were there and um, yeah I was basically put in leadership position almost immediately so you kind of like are forced into um, hearing for the whole and um, it was and there's so much fear of hearing the spirit so you're not always sure if what you're hearing is is the spirit or if it's just you're trying to control situations or mm. yeah, you're just making up stuff. Um, but it was really nice because I always had somebody that I could speak my thoughts to and then get back. Mm. Yeah, that's, this feels good like that. Mm. I'm hearing the same thing mm -hmm. or, or if not, then that's good too. You're like, mm, yeah. I'll speak that a bit. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think gradual and immediate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to ask the big question. You know, there's always, the Course says that you will get a revelatory experience that ends all questioning. And the question that normally comes up is how did the separation happen and why is this even, you know, you know the typical questions. Mm. So what for you has been your revelatory experience if you've had it? Mm. I feel like you have, but... Well. I can't say I've you. had a revelatory experience the way it's described in the course, mm. or even the way David describes his, where you know the world just kind of peels away and you're in mm. the light. Um, um, but yeah, I think somewhere in the course it says too that that's not really necessary. Like as long as mm. we're working with miracles, um, we will come to an experience of peace every time the miracle is 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 seen so um but i don't think i have a lot of questions uh yes anyway um so yeah i don't have any other thoughts about this <laughs> No, I mean, I think, I think that's the thing is that because, I mean, what I hear for that is that because, and you shared it, how this week has been for you and, and I could hear the sense of fulfillment and contentment and peace that, that you're experiencing, that the questions don't even, are not even there because it's a sense of fulfillment and contentment it's just like having your dream and having your functions where you feel this intimate connection with everyone that you're working with or in function with um 
Yeah, I think this whole question comes up. I mean, when I think about it now, the question has come up because of a sense of loneliness or a lack of intimacy, and certainly with you, because of how you deal with all of us and how you serve all of us, you know, it's very, very fulfilling. Mm. Yeah. yeah, just following step by step. Mm. And then there's no questions, really. It's like, uh, well, maybe like, you know, what would you have me do now? <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything that um, that you would, if maybe have, we haven't asked, anything that stands out in your mind that that you would like to share um, that might feel helpful or insightful for ourselves or, the, or our audience? Um, well, the thing that comes to mind is, um, you know, the course is a very simple curriculum, if you really look at it. Um, and the workbook is really just a piece that uh, will get you in touch with guidance, which is what it's all about. And then guidance is what it's all about. And there's mm -hmm. no, um, no question that can't be answered with guidance. <clears throat> so... Yeah, don't complicate it. <laughs> it's a really very simple curriculum. Your love. <laughs> and God loves you. And there's nothing you can do to change it. <laughs> so get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was one thing that really came into my experience really strongly after the dream I had of Jesus that there was, yeah, just really like whatever I was doing, was just perfect and there was nothing I could even attempt to change the fact that I'm innocent and <clears throat> I think for a lot of people in community and including me it's tough sometimes to uh, like step back and just you know maybe just sit in prayer or mm. take a walk or yeah just mm. relax, listen to some music feel like we have a really hard time with that we're just we just love to be in function but i think sometimes function looks like you know every step back so i think uh since the dream it's been more uh relaxing for me to relax <laughs> mm. i hear gentleness eh? yeah it's just like yeah this is this is just the next step now like yeah no difference between here I am like three days working straight on one of our websites because I got so inspired last Sunday about all the shows uh, <laughs> working on yeah overhauling one of our sites and it'll include some information about these shows and I was so inspired and that's what it looked like for like three days straight or maybe four mm -hmm. and then <laughs> you know and the next day it didn't and the next day it didn't so yeah and it's all just part of part of uh, the plan that's the guidance yeah. now the pause it's beautiful thank you so much Yuta. <laughs> thanks for inviting me <laughs> oh my gosh it's a great excuse to be with you and to share you with everybody else you know it's a good opportunity to get to know you a little bit yeah. more I haven't, we haven't had too much face time actually so yeah. we're doing it two-dimensionally it's so, so to speak but yeah, it's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Love you guys. And to our audience, thank you for joining us. It was really lovely to share this sacred space with you and um, share what miracles and the source is like. So now it's everyone's experience. And I was also thinking that uh, if you have any questions and, and uh, you would like to address them to us, you can... Um, uh, get in contact through Living Virtual, uh, Living Miracles Virtual, and uh, we can respond as best we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Great. Thank you all. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Thanks, Dan and Marie. Thanks, Yuta. So beautiful seeing you up on stage. <laughs> up there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, very inspiring. <laughs>
Really inspiring. Just the the reminders that we can relax and let the Holy Spirit take really take the driver's seat and even just hearing the flow of your last few days, Utah, where it's just inspi- inspiration, inspiration, and then, oh, now rest. And, you know, the presence of Jesus really coming through so strongly. It's well, such a joy. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I just had the like, communication word is just in my mind um, so strongly because that's just been everything of our relationships. Um, yeah, we all like work with each other so closely, but it's it's just constant communication, communication. And it's really in that it's like the the ego does not like communication and everything gets kind of shaken up by it. But it's just opening more and more and and exposing exposing it over and over again until we feel like we're really joined with one another in full communication. Yeah, the answer is always just more communication, it seems. Yeah. (laughs) It's beautiful. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I like too. It came came through really strongly for me where... um, you know, your relationship, if you're clear with the spirit, if you're clear with Jesus and like, you know, using your brothers for that as well with more communication, then, you know, that just transfers. So it's, you know, how is your relationship with everybody? Oh, it's good. But like, really, it's about this, this one relationship first and foremost, and then it just seems to transfer. So that's beautiful to hear. Very inspiring. Yeah, I just feel, I just feel Jesus so strongly today. <laughs> it's funny, like, you know, I work, I had in my mind, I don't really have a thought of Easter in my mind. And, and now I'm just feeling, God, why do I feel Jesus so strongly in my <laughs> mind today? It hasn't even been on my path one of you know, my strong symbols, like a, a, a connection with Jesus that I thought of. But today, just, you know, even we come in the car and on the drive here, we just have this massive billboard we go by just with Jesus looking down onto us. And, and then we pass another billboard with Jesus saying, fear not. You know, that's all that we <laughs> there. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I really feel just joined with everyone in that presence today. Yeah, time to roll the stone away. I keep hearing that line in my mind. Roll the stone away. Roll the stone away. Roll the stone away. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, up next we have, goodness, I don't even know who we have up next. <laughs> come gonna, into the light. We're going to roll the stone away and we're going to come into the light <laughs> with Anne. Yes. And that's going to be in about... 12 minutes time or 13 minutes time Mm -hmm. so we'll join you then Mm -hmm. a lovely meditation for us all to sink in with as they get started so over to you father I give you all of my thoughts today. I would have none of mine. In place of them, give me your own. I give you all of my acts as well, that I may do your will instead of seeking goals which cannot be obtained and wasting time in vain imaginings. Today, I come to you. I will. and merely follow you. Be you the guide, and I the follower who questions not the wisdom of the infinite, nor love whose tenderness I cannot comprehend, but which is yet your perfect gift to me. Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Come Into the Light. I'm here with um, Greg Donner, um, my very, very special guest. And um, yeah, I met Greg three years ago um, with his wife, Jenny, at a retreat in Scotland. And I can honestly say that um, 
yeah, my life has just completely and utterly changed. Um, and it's been incredible. And, um, you know, the symbols of Greg and Jenny coming to, into my life at that time were just, um, just so perfect. And, um, yeah, I don't know how to find the words to express the gratitude for that. And, um, yeah, and just, yeah, I knew if I looked at Greg, it'd be like, oh, my goodness, I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, it's been quite a ride these last three years, and um, I'm just so, so grateful. And, uh yeah, I'm going to start the show um, with a little bio from Greg. And um, yeah, and then I'm going to get into some deeper questions. And a little later on in the show, we might just have a surprise guest as well along with us. So, okay. Uh, so this bio is just going to give you a little bit of background about Greg. Um, he found a passion and direction for life in high school when he began to study art, he made a decision to dedicate his life to art as an undergraduate and proceeded to live as an artist and as a teacher of art. Greg also had another calling. He became involved in spiritual communities around 1999 and this included mystical practice with Native American teachings. When A Course in Miracles appeared in Greg's life around 2005, he found his life be begin to move through a slow transition into a life of full devotion to spiritual practice and community. And as Greg puts it, I felt more than anything in my life that I wanted an experience. I love to use my hands to build and to make and to paint and these things transferred over to community in 2012 when I joined Living Miracles and their volunteer building team. About halfway through his first year in community, he started a relationship with an elder member of the community, Jenny. His marriage to Jenny in 2015 was an introduction to a much deeper kind of collaboration than he was ever used to. It involved lots of travel and meeting many new friends from around the world. Jenny was involved with the publications team since the beginning of her working with David, so it was natural that he became more and more exposed to the inner workings of publications. This current book project that we're going to talk about came about in a very different way. David was approached by a mid-sized publisher to print and distribute a book that would reach a broad-based reader interested in deepening their spiritual paths. The name of this book is This Moment is Your Miracle, The Spiritual Tools to Transform Fear into Freedom. For Greg, as with all the projects and community, this book is a means to celebrate and immerse in the clear teachings brought to us by David Hofmeister. Okay, so Greg. In your bio, you say more than anything, I wanted an experience. Can you tell us what that experience was that you were looking for? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of interesting. I'll start with saying that um, I needed a, I needed an experience um, right from the beginning because I was quite dead as a high school, you know, student. So art was a physical experience, and so I learned that way. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> building, you know, also as you shared already, that that came in and was a way for me to experience um, really life and inspiration. Um, and, and so as I moved through 
the different spiritualities that you spoke about too, that the Native American spirituality was very experiential. And it was, a lot of it was relying on the outside because that's how I could, you know, engage and feel alive and, and that. And Native American spirituality practiced uh, fasting, no food, no water, dancing for three, for four days, three nights. And so it was like very visceral and I responded to those things. And I think that's why I was an artist. That's why I was a builder and moved in yeah. spirituality that way. And then the thing is, is it's like you could almost see how the mind was tied into the external somewhat still. And I'm kind of, kind of see this more holistically and, or evolutionary in a sense that um, um, it, it, I still, I was depressed. I was depressed my whole life. I never knew a day without depression. It didn't exist. I didn't know what it was. So, and even medications and stuff, they worked for a little while. I got a sense of normalcy, but then that disappeared. And so in my spiritual seeking, which involved many different other communities, which involved, um, yeah, different processing, a lot of processing, a lot of, you know, the anger work, the grief work, the releasing, releasing, releasing. And after years, it was still like, I still wanted an experience <laughs> because I was, I was still depressed, you know, and actually the course came in around 2005 and a deeper part of my mind started to recognize that the externals really couldn't there was something still missing and a shift happened in my mind. Um, actually, I think the shift happened before, but I knew I needed something much more directly related to my mind and I needed a practice, although there were still practicing and rituals and stuff and those other things, but I needed something like constant. I needed, I realized I needed mind training mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. intuitively I knew the course in miracles was that. And, um, after reading about it, after the metaphysics totally lit up, you know, for me and clarified my Catholic background, which, you know, was still a little bit confusing, a little foggy. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I knew there was a day-to-day -day practice, when I knew that I could have a chance and experience and, and really start working deeper in my mind, mm -hmm. um, actually it was after eight months or nine months or something like that, the, the depression lifted actually lifted without medications and, and that was the first it was yeah. very slow i actually had this this resonance in my you know in my temples and it started going around my my my, my you know my head and then kind of went to the back of my the base of my skull and then it i felt it stop right there i was like huh and this was all over a period of a month mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i was like i guess that's where my work is you know because it's basically what it was saying was metaphorically there's a core separation there's a core loss there's a core issue there that has to be addressed and so it's kind of that was the experience that i was looking for that was so, it yeah 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 okay um yeah can you tell us about the internal transition from being an artist uh, to compiling a book it feels like quite a yeah quite a different yeah. Area to work in. yeah, I kind of prefaced it, prefaced it in a little bit because there was still some external focus, you know, going on with the, the art and with the, the building and experiential spirituality. Um, and so in a sense, what happened was another way to put it. So you can see there that, that I, in my mind, I started to focus more that, that it was realized that it was an internal experience that I had to really address in my mind. But also there's another thing that just happens and it's, it's a great fate, uh, a great um, uh, phrase, which is that relationships can be maximized and the art was maximized. And even in community, I just watched the building practice get maximized, like that sort of relationship. And when in 2003, I had a fairly successful show, like my art was 
from my standards, it didn't sell very well. It was a few paintings sold, but for my standards, I put my heart into it. I said, in fact, I lost money because I quit most of my jobs. And then I, I went, okay, there was like six or so months where I just poured my heart into this because I had a, a solo show coming up um, there in Houston. And it was a huge, huge room with lots of space. And I could make these big paintings and, you know, and so I, I just poured my heart into it. And, and it was really, again, spirit was using the relationship. It maximized it really right then in a, in a sense. But then over the years, I was wondering what to do with myself. I didn't know what to do. Um, come after the course started settling in and yeah, I mean, I, I was starting to feel detached from what I was doing like as a teacher and I was starting to get more relaxed and more comfortable and connecting with my students more deeply. And then, so the art was starting to, to fade away. I didn't know what to do. So I just, I really just kept praying. Um, and this is a little bit of an anecdote more than anything, but because the Course in Miracles was really resonating with me. And so I didn't know what to do with images. I mean, when my thoughts are images I've made and like, I already know that, you know, so I was making these worlds, you know, in, in my paintings and, and then the value of those images started to drop away. And I, I kept praying. I was like, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And I was like feeling, well, I'm kind of inspired to do the lessons. I was inspired to do paint the lessons. And so I kept praying. I was like, okay, you know, this is what I'm going to do unless I hear something otherwise. And I, and that went on for years, actually that went on for years with that, that prayer of what do I paint and why? And, you know, and, the, and, and I, I enjoyed doing that. I mean, I would be with the, the lessons for days and days. So that was an experience. So when and, the book and, came in, how did yeah. that, you know, all that vibrancy mm. and aliveness around the art, how did that transfer to, to actually compiling the book? Is there... Yeah. Well, if we're sticking with the art theme, and this is just <laughs> something that I just realized just recently, but it's kind of cool because I resonated with the Renaissance artists. I was like, these guys would paint, these guys would stay years. They would take years painting. Mm. This, these paintings and and all the attention and everything went into it and so I realized oh wow because I did a painting like that I spent a year over a year on it and like actually couldn't didn't know how to finish it and it came it finished later on but so in just sort of joining this past week I realized there's a connection there because this book is like a compilation of it's like compilation of 25 years and gems and just the best of the best and um and um it's you know you could say it has like 40,000 parts and yet it's coming together as a whole and a renaissance painting is like that or or the the, the kind of art that i made was like that so it's like i realize that it's in and, and also the devotion to like it took devotion to to be a painter. It took discipline, mm -hmm. and I really needed that. Um, and so it transfers here. And there's I have inspiration about that. I mean, I, I feel I. Yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. Where's the devotion start? Does it start with the teachings, or mm -hmm. because we're here? It's like it's all molds and melds into one. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As I understand it, uh, this project has been a grand collaboration with over 50 people, including myself. Um, yeah, yeah. It was about the time that I moved into the Spanish community that this book project came in. Um, so I wondered if you could just talk a little bit about the collaboration and how yeah. that how that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's so many ways we can talk about that yeah it's been really cool because um collaboration has involved mostly people from outside of the core live-in community um and like in spain there would be these opportunities to come together um we we had a, a devotional in um, february of last year that you helped actually with me we actually wrote a whole email and a whole letter about it you know how how this devotional was going to go really deep and 
and as this is our purpose together. And so there was this strong purpose, you know, behind, behind the coming the collaboration. And we would normally have teams that would, you know, develop and then sort of dissolve and develop and dissolve. That would be one kind of form of the collaboration, which was really beautiful because there was all this ebb and flow that we really couldn't really, there was really no control over it. It's just all just really happened. Mm -hmm. And the devotional in Spain was a big part of that. You were, you were involved with the, um, the guidance chapter. We had relationship teams, guidance team, and they yeah. would just come together and gather um, 50 of David's uh, transcripts, talks from different places around the world. Mm -hmm. And they would just sift through them and just we would get these intuitions about what the content was for that chapter and we would kind of feed it to you guys and share about it we would join on it and then you guys would go off and scan through the materials yeah, together in pairs and the, compile a um yeah. compile yeah. a new document <laughs> with maybe 30 pages on relationships and so there, there's so many different ways um yeah. Collaboration is offline, or, or you know, is is long distance online, and and also usually within the, the little small group that we we have together. You know, right now at Bliss, which mm. is four of us. Right yeah. So. Okay, um, mm. I'm just feeling to bring our yeah. surprise guest in, and um, mm. yeah, these questions are going to go across. Yeah to Jenny, who was the other person that uh, <laughs> I first met with my first introduction to Living Miracles. And I just had this, this thought, you know, like it's Easter and um, yeah, just um, breathing life, the spirit into this body three years ago. And yeah, just again, you know, just that feeling of gratitude to you both and it goes so deep, there's just not words for it, but welcome, Jenny. It's beautiful Thank you, to Anne. have you here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, it is mm. beautiful to be here together. Yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah I've, I've got some questions, but I, I know that Jenny might shake it up and ask me questions too, and that's okay. That comes in. Uh, but yeah, it was... Um, it was about forgiveness, the next question. Um, and that's really our life in community. And I just want to understand really how, um, yeah, how it relates to the book project. And basically, have you got any parables around forgiveness? Something that, that actually occurred, you know, in, in the compiling of the book and yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a question for either or both of you. Right. Well, I think every day actually is devoted to forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And this book project um, helps us in a way because it is like joining with, with the light, with the message all the time. So you can't get away. You can't get away for long with anything <laughs> because what you're working with in the book is usually what you need to, to hear because that's how spirit works. I'm sure almost every course student have experienced that when you open the course, it's exactly what you need or when you put a song on, it's exactly what you need to hear. And as far as specific examples, um, nothing the timeline. else. The timeline. I mean, directly related to, <laughs> it's, it's pretty new because generally uh, the community doesn't really work with deadlines and like, you know, have like the pressure of like a, a job or something like that out in the world. So, and it's been neat though. It's been neat to watch. Like we have a deadline, you know, it's like, well, this is very unusual. And so um, one great thing, one a huge thing that happened is that we compiled the book basically in November and we turned in our first big batch and they returned it back to us saying, I mean, it was actually pretty strong criticism. Like we missed the mark basically, you know, and, and different things. And we're just watching that from, you know, from like more of an observer perspective, but 
What they suggested, though, was that we take seven chapters, which is what the book was, and turn it into 17 chapters. And we were in our mind going, we're floating, we're sailing along, we're really, we're doing <laughs> great. We just have all this time to, to edit and to, you know, to refine it and stuff like that. But um, so it was a really mind watcher, really, just mm. to, to watch that. And underneath, and it was, I mean, it's very mild for I think Jenny and I we didn't really feel actually felt inspiration under that because we needed the support and the collaboration is so different than anything that we've uh, worked with before so um, she they gave us such good feedback and we're like oh my god this is miraculous like we do our part and then we can only go so far and then they give us back these incredible perfect suggestions so yeah. it's this very interesting collaboration that that we're having here so there and i think there was some deeper forgiveness with others too with it but but i think you know it was just sort of like a shock a surprise and just like oh my god a little nervousness a little fear but then it's like the inspiration underneath that is like yeah oh, seven more months of of yeah full on full on we got to do the whole book again so we had so 40 percent of the book was missing still because we had 17 chapters now to fill and so there was this you know the sense of letting spirit do it. I mean, in, in miracles like that, all throughout the whole thing, just everything was just given at the time we needed it. And it was actually inspiring. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah. I've got one last question, um, which is who is the book for? Um, who would want to read it? And why? Well, what I feel is that, who wants to read it is the one who wants to join with the light. Mm. In fact, mm. because it's, uh, I don't know if I can put this into words, but it's like, um, I, this book is, um, is David's, David's voice, spirit's voice through David, which is such that when he goes out to meet people, he can meet anyone and spirit is extending through him. So I feel that uh, that's, that's, what, that's what I, that's my passion, to bring that through a book to the world. And so um, this book, uh, the publisher suggested early on that this book will be for like a new spiritual seeker, that is, um, may, has maybe a Christian background that has touched upon spirituality, has not yet gone deeply into it. And, um, and I thought, oh, that's me 15 years ago. So I got really in touch with that. So it felt like so perfect because my heart is also burning to, to share with, um, with those people who, who are who I was. Um, mm. So, so yeah, I would say, yeah, anyone who wants to join with the light and wants, you know, a, a beautiful, fresh experience, not just new spiritual seekers, I feel this book will actually be a companion for, for anyone who, who wants a holy relationship, a mighty companion, because that's what this mm. message is. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I really feel the book for, for myself as well because, you know, there are some gaps in, in yeah, in what I know um, and what I understand from the course. So I'm, I just can't wait. And um, it, I'm not sure what the date is when it's coming out or if you have any ideas as yet. But. It's February 2019. Okay. <laughs> That's very clear then. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's um, that's the end of any questions that I've got. I just want to, uh, yeah, just thank you both for being here, mm -hmm. for your openness and your honesty and your incredible answers to the questions. And yeah, just for being the light for this body. And uh, yeah, for so many more. And um, yeah, just this book. Like you say, you know, the inspiration, everything that's underneath it is just such a light for, for the world. So, yeah. Thank you.
Thank you. It's been beautiful to watch the collaboration and all the people that got involved. Um, is yeah. the time out? Right? We got two minutes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, because so many people have been in and out, and there has been healing. And you asked about forgiveness. Mm. I remember back in Spain in the community we had with the teams, and there were days when there were anger coming up. And for me. <laughs> <laughs> for you and for others uh, and people who say, I don't want to work with this <laughs> relationship theme anymore. And, you know, things yeah. like that came out and, and that was okay. And, and we were just prayerful and, you know, just feeling into, okay, what is most helpful? And maybe a new person came in, maybe, you know. Call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. rise my soul will rest in your embrace for i am yours and you are mine your grace abounds in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you've never failed and you won't start now My soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Oh, 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 you and you. Lead me where my trust is 
is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours and you Welcome, everyone. Yeah, most of the week I, I wasn't really sure what my show was going to be about today. Um, but I had this feeling that the spirit was going to bring it in close to the time. And yeah, in the last few days, I just feel like I've had all of these miracles with music. So again, the theme of my show is music. Um, I feel like the spirit's telling me something with that because the name of my song my the name of my show is the song of prayer and the last show was on music as well um but yeah just I, I i'd love to share just an experience i had on friday evening um david called us all together in the community <sighs> I thought I'd get a little further. <laughs> I think I'm just touched by that song as well that we sang. So, uh, But yeah, David um, wanted to show the Hillsong movie, Let Hope Rise. And um, so we all came together for it. And I just had this really profound experience i was like sitting right up at the front really close to david and just um for anyone who doesn't know hillsong they're an australian christian band that um travel all around the world just singing these beautiful devotional songs um and they fill auditoriums with thousands of people and you can just you can just feel the presence the presence of them on stage and everybody in the audience there's Everybody just wants to feel that connection with God. And um, yeah, I've seen this movie before, but um, this time it felt like I experienced it on a much deeper level. Could just feel that um, all, of the, all of the singers and musicians, you know, when they got on stage, there was just this um, presence radiating through them because the whole purpose of it was just to um, feel that, um, yeah, feel the presence of Jesus in their hearts and just extend that for themselves and for everyone. And um, I was really moved by the, the female singer in it. I think her name is um, Taya. And just when she would be interviewed and she would speak about, um, about what it's all about for her, there was just such a humbleness. And she just said, She just said, I love Jesus. <laughs> and I want to sing and I want Jesus to use me. <laughs> and so when 
she was on stage just singing these really powerful songs. I just had this experience that I was her. And um, it was like what was coming through was not of this world. It wasn't a person singing. It was a message. And um, something just opened up in me, this, this huge feeling of inspiration and expansion and magnitude. It's actually kind of hard to to put it into words but it just felt like this yeah all i can say was it was huge something was huge and um it was like i felt in that moment like i it was like i got in touch with why i was here like there was meaning And then, and then I could see the thought that came in was, that's like, can I ask for that? Like, it feels like it's too much. Like, can I really ask for that? And it, and it's not asking for the form. It's not about standing in front of thousands of people and singing. That's not it. It was the experience that I was asking for. Like, whatever that was, that was just bursting through. It felt like it wasn't of this world and. And I could see with that thought, can I ask for that? That um, it's like something um, came in and just like pushed that feeling down, like pushed that inspiration down. And I, and I saw that, wow, I, I'm, that must be what's blocking me. Like that thought that I, that's too much. I'm, I, I'm not worthy to ask for that. And, and in that, I actually don't even know what my inspiration is. I, I, uh, I lose touch of it and so it was really beautiful because at the end of the movie I, um, I just shared all of this with David and when I said can I really ask for that I just felt like Jesus was coming through him and he just looked me in the eye and he said this is your calling this is why you're here and I felt like that was Jesus or the Spirit giving me permission to say I I can I can go for this like I have permission I don't have to keep pushing it away so it just felt like a really deep experience for me and and I felt like the whole room was in that vibe like the whole room was just supporting what David was saying energetically and and then we started talking about um, a, a music tour that we're actually going to be doing. Um, myself, Jason, Jeffrey, Susanna, and Netta Boyne, who was on my last show. And we've been talking about this a little bit for the last few weeks, but in the last day or two, it's just all the signs and symbols are coming in that, yes, this is the, this is what the spirit wants. Like it's like music is just all around. Netta has just finished her album. It's like Jesus wants to her to go out and just share these beautiful songs that she's written. They're, they're, they're to bless everyone. And then whatever this is that I feel is being activated in me, I feel that there's something that wants to come through. And um, it's like, Jesus is saying, I want to give you a tour. <laughs> Like, I want you to see that, that this is me and um, you can't ignore this anymore. And, and everybody was just celebrating in that. And, and um, when we came home that night, we were talking about it more. And then the next morning, and it was like all of this inspiration was coming in, you know, ideas of um, maybe doing two big concerts. Um, yeah, just... It just felt like everybody, it wasn't, it wasn't personal. Like everybody was in the inspiration. Everybody was being activated at the same time, regardless of what part of the world they were in. We had a call with Annette. She didn't know any of this was going on. And, and she said, you know, I had a thought the other day, like, are we really supposed to do this tour? And then I just decided that um, I was, I was going to say yes. And I was going to trust. And it was literally at that moment that all of this stuff was happening with the movie um, when we were watching the movie over here. And so when we called her, she was like, you know, so on board and she's like, I'm so excited. And we were just all celebrating this. And yeah. 
so yeah, it just feels like there's been so many miracles over the past few days and, um, and the spirits behind it all. And it's like waiting to see what the spirit is presenting and just saying yes to it. It's like, you know, just going on a music tour or singing or anything, you know, if it's, if it's not for the purpose of forgiveness and healing, it really means nothing. But when you just see that the spirit is under it, you know that it is something so much bigger than you can even imagine. It's not even about what you think it is. It's like, and I, I just feel like this, it's just this magnitude and this feeling of something so huge in, in all of this is in my mind. And it can just feel like it's nearly breathtaking. Like, yeah, I just want to go with it. So with that in mind, maybe I could share some of the details and yeah, what it's going to look like. And, and yeah, the idea is that the tour is going to be in the west coast in america um in july and uh the window is going to be somewhere in between the 5th of july and the 23rd of july and we'll extend it right till the 23rd if it feels there's a call but part of the inspiration of just even sharing this on the show is that um yeah like we've just been sharing all our ideas of what what feels exciting like there was an idea that we would, well, we are going to start it in LA and we're going to, uh, and we're going to finish it in San Francisco. So we're going to drive from LA to San Francisco and maybe have a, a big concert in LA to start off with. And then another big concert um, in San Francisco to finish it off. Like we felt like like an open air concert um, that wouldn't necessarily be just for Course in Miracles students. Like it's this music, it transcends, transcends teachings. It's like about an experience. So um, yeah, that just felt, feels really exciting. And, and if any of you feel a spark, you know, to join with us, whether it's just to meet for coffee or to um, uh, host us or organize a gathering, it's like our joy is just to connect with everyone. And um, and to be with you. So um, yeah, I just want to put that invitation out and, and even just hearing your feedback, you know, if there's an inspiration, it makes it clear what the spirit's plan is. So if you're interested, you can email me at emily at livingmiracles.org and just share if you, if you want to meet up or if you have any ideas. So yeah, it feels, it feels really beautiful. <laughs> I'm just kind of losing track of time and everything. <laughs> it's like, okay, we're good. I actually had um, a little section from the course that I read this morning that really felt like it was speaking to the experience that I was just talking about on Friday. And about, yeah, just the spirit wants to offer us, offer us so much and to step out of this littleness and into into our magnitude and the section is from littleness versus magnitude. Be not content with littleness. Littleness is the offering you give yourself. You offer this in place of magnitude and you accept it. There is a deep responsibility you owe yourself and one you must learn to remember all the time. The lesson may seem hard at first, but you will learn to love it when you realize that it is true and it is but a tribute to your power. You who have sought and found littleness, remember this. Every decision you make stems from what you think you are and represents the value that you put upon yourself. Believe the little can content you and by limiting yourself, you will not be satisfied. For your function is not little. It is, it is only in finding your function and fulfilling it that you can escape from littleness. There is no doubt about what your function is, for the Holy Spirit knows what it is. There is no doubt about your magnitude, for it reaches you through him from magnitude. You do not have to strive for it because you have it. 
all your striving must be directed against littleness, for it does require vigilance to protect your magnitude in this world. To hold your magnitude in perfect awareness in a world of littleness is a task the little cannot undertake. Yet it is asked of you in tribute of your magnitude and not your littleness. Nor is it asked of you alone. The power of God will support every effort you make on behalf of his dear son. Search for the little and you deny yourself this power. God is not willing that his son be content with less than everything, for he is not content without his son, and his son cannot be content with less than his father has given him. And I just feel that that section really speaks to that experience I had on Friday where I felt that it was only in me being able to ask for what, for what God wants to give, that I could get in touch with that inspiration. And the moment I thought, no, that's too much, it all, yeah, it all just went out of my awareness. So, Yeah, and there's another song that I feel I would love to sing just to finish off the show. And it's um, called Nella Fantasia. And um, the, the music originally came from the movie, The Mission, and then words were put to it. And um, you know, it's a song. And I feel like this song really touches me on a deep level. And um, the reason being, because I, I feel there's a beautiful message in it. Because as I shared on, on my last show, like I've sung a lot of opera music and um, a lot of classical music. But now, for me, I, I feel that, you know, unless there's a message underneath it, it doesn't mean anything. It's like with everything that we do throughout our day, the question needs to be, what is it for? And it can't be about just a beautiful tune or a, a nice voice. There has to be a message that the Spirit wants to communicate. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, this song really touches me. And I felt before I sing it, because the song is in Italian, I could just actually sing, um, I could just read the words in English, the English translation, just to share the heart of it. In my happy dream, I see a kind world. Everyone lives in peace and honesty here. All are free, like clouds that fly, full of kindness in the depths of the one soul. In my happy dream, I see a kind world. Even the night is full of wonder. All are free, like clouds that fly. In my happy dream, I see a kind world that breathes on the cities like a friend. All are free like clouds that fly, full of kindness in the depths of one's soul. So yeah, I, I'd like to sing you that song that I can feel emotion coming up already. <laughs> so I'm going to try and get through it and see what happens. <laughs> it's in the spirit's hands.
Hey, thank you, everyone. <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity for me to be able to even get in touch with this. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's not a dry eye in the house over here what do you say after that <laughs> i just want to say thank you so much emily for just an inspiring demonstration of vulnerability and magnitude and 
Yeah, I was just really moved by the whole thing. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I can all just really feel that. <laughs> I think everyone's with you. I was just <laughs> I can see everybody there. Just really feel that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I find myself feeling very speechless. So, yes, so we'll just introduce what we have coming up next. <laughs> so, in another 15 minutes, you can join us for our last show of the day, which is the last step with Jeffrey. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, we're having some miraculous healing here in the studio, everyone's breaking apart. We were just joking, it's not a 15 minute break, it's a 15 minute breakdown and we keep the cameras rolling, like this is authentic, it's beautiful. So It's massive, so this is just such a gift for everyone. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll lead straight into the next session, the next show, The Last Step with Jeffrey. Here we go. Hello and welcome to The Last Step. I'm here with Frank today, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to say it's been quite electric here after Emily's show, and there wasn't a dry eye in the house, and yeah, there was a lot of healing, and it felt really, uh, really amazing, actually. But uh, happy Easter to you. It was, I was thinking when uh, Peter was sharing earlier that it was Easter and having all these thoughts of Jesus, and it's April Fool's Day, and I had this thought that like Jesus pulled the biggest, made a joke of death, so it was like, what a great thing that they line up on the same day this year. So, uh, yeah, I have Frank here. I met Frank at the beginning of February. He came down, and we actually started talking about this idea for this show. And, you know, and I shared my story, which I shared with you a few weeks ago about making this transition from a life of recovery to a life of devotion. And, uh, you know, Frank, I would imagine you feel a bit like Alice, tumbling down the rabbit hole at this point. So um, I got a choice for you. You can take the blue pill, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll uh, you'll wake up back in California at your ranch, or you can take the red pill and see how deep the rabbit hole goes. <laughs> it's, funny. it's funny when I had this thought came to me in the morning. I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> But it was actually, what are the pills? You know what I mean? When I actually asked them, like, what's it for? And it's like, this is the third step that I talk about and that we talk about. It's like, it's in every moment that I'm making that decision, which pill I'm going to take. And what's the blue pill? The blue pill is actually autonomy. That's what it is. You know, Neo had a choice to go back to his apartment or he could take the red pill. And then from that moment, what's the red pill? Letting go of autonomy or this belief in conflicting desires. <laughs> from that moment that he made that choice, he did not go on alone from there. His mighty companions joined around him, and he was with them until the last step. Trinity was there and right until the last step until the source in the movie took the last step. So I thought it was kind of cool to share that and uh, actually have Frank share a bit about his journey up to this point and uh, what led him to the moment I got to meet him down at La Casa at our uh, Adventure into the Heart of Awakening retreat. So... Frank. Yeah, I got, um, actually just before I, I got very emotional because I realized that um, I finally found, you know, what I've been asking for, um, a, a method and a way to get there because I came, you know, I came through the doors of heaven or you know in, uh, in 84 when I uh, when I got uh, um, clean and sober and through the 12 steps and you know I saw this word God everywhere and, and the spiritual awakening I said well that's not going to happen to me but it's all I ever wanted and um, you know I my biggest prayer has always been what is it that I'm still hanging on to, you know, that's keeping me from that um, promise in the 12th step where it says having had a spiritual awakening, you know, and really 
you know, I've been going, well, uh, it's been, what date is it today? First. It's, it's the first? first? <laughs> no, you're kidding. No. It's, well, it's 34 years today that I. <laughs> That's, okay. <laughs> April 1st. <laughs> so, so, so uh, you know, the, the, this is something I, I realized in the 12 step. It's actually, it's a very, very profound teaching. You know, it asks a lot. And it asks in the third step already. And it's the first thing you see when you walk into meetings um, is give my will and my life over to the care of God. What else is there? You know, th that's it. And then in the 11th step, it says only pray, praying for knowledge of his will and the power to carry that out. So that completely um, leaves Frank out of the picture, you know. <laughs> but I didn't know how to do that. And I always thought, you know, if you would have asked me, do you want enlightenment? Yes, of course I want it. But what I didn't know was the fear I had, you know, and this is what I'm learning in the course. There's so much fear and resistance um, because now, you know, I'm really, you know, there with the tools. And, and it's, you know, it, it, the, the program talks about letting go absolutely. And I say, yeah, yeah, I'm letting go absolutely. But now, am I, you know, is what am I still holding on to? And, and I, I realize, whoa, this is scary, you know. So the rabbit hole is, is, um, is the right word, you know. And, and so, so that was... Uh, uh, you know, I've, I've been looking at many teachings, metaphysical teachings that just came my way. And I didn't know how to get there. You know, I was studying those for years and years. And it brought me to the course eventually so that I could understand what the collapse of the world means. I just didn't know how to get there. You know, I always said, it's like, uh, you know, I'm sitting there and there's people snowboarding across the lake or across a space where I can get to and I can talk for hours about snowboarding but I actually don't do it and now the the course is you know now you get there and 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 you do it and that's the lessons for me it was really the lessons the unwinding of the ego also one of the things you know the the, the 12 steps talks about one thing we all have in, in common I guess in those meetings is this extreme unworthiness you know not being enough and um and that's why there's so many egos there's a lot of egos in, in the 12 steps and they're really strong in this and but it's so um divinely guided and you look at the personalities how can these crazy people have this amazing thing you know that works it's so divinely inspired and just you know it's 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 perfect it's a perfect um so we had to, because it's principle, because the personalities couldn't do it. You know, there is a, there is an amazing um, unity, you know, and um, and it's not, you know, it it is the one, you know. It's and and at the meetings we read at every meeting there is one that has all power, and then the word one comes again. It says that one is God. May you find him now, you know, yesterday or before we heard an excerpt of David speaking. It's simple. You know, the now is simple. It's really simple. What's complicated is the future and the past and all the mind screw that goes with it. But, but you know, so what I'm learning now is the trust, you know, absolute trust. So even though I thought I was pretty surrendered and I, I must have been, you know, to get here to a point, but I was try just still trying to control everything. And, 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 uh, and now this trust is really what I'm looking at and where I'm going. You know, I, I just trust the moment without controlling it, even in thought. I mean that's 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 the the aim, and um, and that's scary. That is scary, you know. Mm. But that fear, I can recognize that fear and just know mm. it's ego. Yeah, you talk about uh, 
that line which comes right before they read the steps in the 12-step programs and in the book originally he said may you find it the may you find him now mm -hmm. Actually, Bill Wilson that wrote the book wrote it originally, you must find him now. Mm -hmm. They changed it because they're like, nobody's going to listen to musts. And it was mm -hmm. until after the third step that they put musts into the book. Until we surrendered our will, then they start saying, you must do this, you must. Because before that, it was this, you know, this resistance and stuff. Too much ego with addicts, you know, they don't like to be told what to do. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I had a bit of a problem asking an addict to pick which pill to take, too. Right, but right. I, I knew which pill to take. But, you know, I've always been wanting to take that pill, but as I said, it was, um, you know, the, there's, the, the practice now is so clear and it goes so deep. Um, You know, the, the and, and I think one of the, see, I always thought the program was, when I came, was a change of behavior. Okay, now I've done all this bad stuff and it made me use and now I have to be good. And I did that for years. And that's, that's just the ego trying to be good. And it's very frustrating. And it's actually, you know, it's like trying to hold a spring down and you can hold it and hold it and hold it and then boom, it comes up. And then <laughs> what happens is binging of bad behavior, you know, because I'm trying to control, you know, the ego is trying to control it. So then I realized, you know, it is a, you know, the book, the, the, the big book says, this book has been written for one reason only is to find God. And the whole practice is in that, um, you know, in the 11th step where it says sought through prayer and meditation, to improve our conscious contact with God, asking only for his will for us and the power to carry that out. And that is so huge. That is so huge, you know. And, and, and the book also says, we're children of God. You know, we read this stuff and, and then, you know, well, I, even that, that sentence I said, you know, there's one that has all power, that one is God, may you find him out. I said, well, good for him. I hope he likes me. You know, so I'm going to really behave now. And, um, and I, I spent years doing that, you know, trying. You can't do it. But um, <laughs> can't do it. I talked about that in the first show that um, a lot gets caught up in behavior modification, right, you know, right. within the 12 steps. And it's actually brings it back to what we're talking about, this decision in each moment, mm -hmm. you know, that actually is the change of mind. Yeah. And then everything it says, if once we're spiritually, then we straighten out mentally and physically. But even with that, it was funny this morning, I, I went out and I meditated and I'm like, all right, can I have Frank on the show? What are we going to talk about? And I shared it with everyone the first week that I was on my, myself is that the reason I'm so attracted to A Course in Miracles and certainly ultimately to community was relationship, you know, and the 12 steps is repairing our relationships. And now I'm giving and Frank is a relationship that's been given. We had a lot in common when he first walked into La Casa. He was, I think you were late for the, the session. It was a Wednesday, Chautauqua. Yeah. And there was one seat right up front in front of David. And he just came in. And he's like, I'm late. And they're like, no, we've been waiting for you. And you came in. And it was like that story I shared with this guy, John, I had back home that it was an immediate feeling like, oh, and I hadn't known yet that he had been through 12 steps and all that for, you know, until that time. But there was this immediate connection. And it was like, all right. And then sure enough, we started to join throughout that retreat. And he's been taking some big steps. He bought a home down here and started to take those, those steps. And we've been joining on this stuff a lot like a sponsor relationship, like mm -hmm. sponsors and sponsees, you know, speaking with one another, but it really is about that relationship. And what I, the line that came to me was in the second step, you know, me and Frank are, we'd say that we're addicted to uh, blue books because all our books, all our books are, are blue. <laughs> But at the end, this is beautiful. My my uh, my sponsor, Big Book Bill, had me write in my uh, in my step book, and the line is true humility. And what's true humility? I don't know. It's as simple as that. True humility and an open mind can lead us to faith, because this is at the second step, which is came to believe that I could be restored to sanity. Then it says, and every meeting is an assurance that God will restore us to sanity if we rightly relate ourselves to Him. And my sponsor had me write underneath this. How am I rightly relating to others? I had the question here and I had to answer it every day. And that's the, that's the solution that 
I relate, the way I relate to others is the way I relate to God. And now I don't go to meetings anymore. We call it joining here. And it's always every time we join, where two or more are joined, spirit comes in. That's the humility. When I don't know, I, when I can say, I don't know, what do you think, Frank? And we, we join on that. That's where spirit comes in. And that's the humility and the open mind that leads me to faith. And it was funny because when I read that this morning, I'm like thinking about the relationships and you've been given a few others since you've got yes. here. And, yeah. Yes. And there's, um, you know, there's so many things I realized that, that I'm, I'm doing and so many, uh, you know, repressed emotions and so much uh, behavior that is just became automatic, but it's total self-driven, you know, and, and um, so when we do these, so uh, we have these tasks that we do, like now I'm just getting the house ready for retreat and, and, um, and I raise not about the task, it's about you know, because we constantly with Laverne and I, we, we join and, you know, with you. And so what's going on? And, and you know, there's people, even they, they do it, ha- they, they're on a project for three months or six months and then they give it up. And it's, there's no, oh, God, I wasted my time because it's not about the task. You know, it's not about the task. And that's what, what I'm, I'm learning. And, um, you know, the, the, the healing that I realized, you know, there was a point when uh, I was studying this teaching is the infinite way by um, uh, Joel Goldsmith. And I just, there was a moment where, when I thought, you know, I don't, I was getting away from the meetings and I got a very um, strong call to go back. And because there is such a deep, um, deep call for God in these 12 steps mm. that often you don't hear, you know, because we get so wrapped up in the life and then we t- people talk about their problem and, and then the problem gets solved. But it's not about, you know, the, the sponsors solve the problem, but that's not what it's about. The, 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 the whole task is, you know, there's one power. May you find that power now, you know, and, and that power is, in you it is you because you are a child of that power you know and that addresses directly the that that um that uh unworthiness you know that we all suffer so much as substance abusers and in the meditation and in that connection that gets healed you know so the the healing factor is only in uh, in that contact, that that's where it is, mm. and that's where I feel my call was for the last few years is to go because I travel a lot to, to go and share that you know really share my experience, um, and now you know since I'm here, things have been going so fast you know it's just it's really I mean even the the house I bought we call it. Casa Quantico, because it was <laughs> a quantum experience, you know, it went blah, blah, blah. We had actually, after the retreat, uh, I had a plane leaving at 6.30, <laughs> and, yeah. and the retreat was over at 11, and between that, yeah. and, you know, and then I said, Jeffrey, I need, <laughs> I need to be at the airport by 5.30, Frank, and we, we, we bought we the house. Sign the paper, <laughs> as you put the pen down. Like, Looking on oh, my watch, okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Because I had, you know, I had to get back, but it felt so right, you know. It felt, uh, uh, and and I'm 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 so so happy, you know, to to be, hmm. um, you know, on this. Yeah, it's like that red pill you gave me. Yeah, I can feel it now. <laughs> you know and it's been like that and there's some things that happen you know like I think about something and then uh, you know the other day I thought thought about and then David I I, I hadn't thought about for 15 years and David mentions it at the table you know and this is this is the mind you know it's just just one mind welcome to the miracle everything that's the miracle you know that's the miracle but I have to say that miracle is also 
promised in the 12 steps, mm. having had a spiritual awakening, you know, so it promises that. But the, the, the course is such a fast track to it, you know, because I have to unwind my ego. I don't have to fix my ego. I don't have to fix myself. Um, Uta this morning said, you know, just let me be, what is it? Let me be replaced by you. Yeah. That's, that's what I want, you know. Yeah. That's really what I want. And I know the ego doesn't want that. And I feel that. I can feel it. But now I know this is not me, you know. And I must have said things like that often at meetings because there's a meeting, an NA meeting in Switzerland. When I come in, they say, oh, hi, I'm not even Frank because I must have said that, you know, because when I realize my true nature, I'm not even Frank. I'm not Frank. You know, Frank doesn't exist because there's only, there's only the Christ. Mm. You know, that is my nature. What, what is behind it all is the Son of God. What is the Son of God? Pure spirit, you know? And sometimes when I go uh, into, you know, the thought of that, into a meditation, I realize that, that the I that I am doesn't care about anything but love. It doesn't, you know, the last time I had a really deep experience was in an airplane. I'm not even in an airplane, you know. Mm. It doesn't, it, that's who I am. That's who I truly am. And then, you know, then it got bumpy. And then the ego comes back, Whoa! you know. And there's, <laughs> said, but there's absolutely no risk here, you know, because I am, yeah. Yeah, you talk the about Christ. Yeah, we talk about a lot of the <laughs> today on Easter. Yeah, risen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and we talk a lot about <laughs> we talk a lot about the twelve steps because there is because there's certain parts in there that they say we we practice, you know, and it's we claim progress, not perfection. And every time I read that, I'm like, how about we claim perfection yeah. and settle for progress? I don't use the word settle either. But there's certain lines in there, like even in the end of the step book, this retranslation of what ambition is, because growing up, you know, as what ambition, you know, looked like and to work and do everything, they actually say in the step book, they say true ambition is the deep desire to live usefully and walk humbly under the grace of God. And when I first read that, I was like, I got to show this to my father. <laughs> that was my first thought. But it's like, <laughs> how do I do it? Because it was always what I shared on my other show, too, was there's a lot of no, don't do that. Like there's, there's a, like, it's almost like this don't go all the way. And that's what led me to certainly hear and to practice the course more deeply was this idea that it is all mind and actually bring you back to that. Because I had a, a lot of great experiences in 12 steps. And I always said, if it worked perfectly, yeah, you'd, you'd disappear. Like if it was absolute mm -hmm. perfection, but there was a, I had a lot of people that was like, oh, don't leave your job originally. I'm like, oh, I can't go back. You know what I mean? So there were certain points for me that I knew I had to actually make those decisions. Like even for here, your decision points where it looked like a house and certain things. But what led you to the first retreat? Like I know you've gone to one in Europe and then. Yeah, uh, I mean, that also went super fast because, you know, I was um, uh, last, just before Christmas, it was in 16, I was struggling through. I have to say, I really struggled through Mary Baker Eddy's Science and Health. You know, and I saw, oh, yeah, I want this, I want this, but how do I get there? And finally, I was on my knees. I took the book, I threw it against the wall. I thought, what is this? You know, it's just, I've been led on by a carrot, but I can't get there, you know? And I, I tore it up and I was, I was this close to suicide. And, um, <clears throat> and then, on my computer appeared the Course in Miracles. And I thought, wow, that's Marion Williamson. I have heard about that, but she wrote the book. You know, I didn't know. And then <laughs> David, so David, I thought, well, that's not Marion Williamson. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, and I went, I mean, it was just like, like this. It, where have you been all my life? And I, st <laughs> 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 I 
And I thought, why did I have to struggle through all these teachings that really give you the truth, but don't really offer, I mean, what I see as a practice to get there. So for men, it went really fast. I went back to Europe and I was just listening to everything on YouTube because that was, I didn't know about the website. I didn't know about anything. And, and I got to, to Switzerland and I, um, was jet lagged and I woke up and, you know, and I listened to you and fell back asleep. And then the thought came, look what these, these guys maybe go on tour or whatever. I, I, I was sure because I was saw David in a different setting. And so, you know, I got up, I went at four in the morning and, and then I saw there's a phone number. I called it, you know, waited to seven. And then they said, well, there's one retreat. There was three retreats, I think, in Europe last year. And this one was just two days. Yeah. So I went to that retreat and, um, and something really happened, especially after like things opened up and I was crying. And I told people, you know, this is the most powerful thing I've ever been to. So well, what did you do? I, said, I don't know. We just sat there. We touched a little bit. We watched movies. <laughs> you, know I mean? you know that thing with the angel? Not really. I mean, it was actually very pleasant, you know, and I stayed in a nice hotel just next door. And so it wasn't, you know, like the Pasana or something. So, uh, <laughs> and, and then I just went to the next, you know, Kirsten's and, 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 um, and then this one, and it was just like, you know, <laughs> being sucked into this, you know, this uh, uh, practice where, where everything becomes clear and uh, not easy, uh, but, but clear. And what is the, you know, we talk a lot about uh, mind watching here. So what is mind watching is what's the purpose for thinking this? What's the purpose for, do is it for, uh, sep, you know, do what I'm saying now, or what I'm doing, or who am I hanging out with? Is that does that have a purpose of separating me, or does this join? You know, and that's and actually, it's quite simple. It's not even that hard, you know. So, um, yeah, it's just I'm I'm. There's so much to say, but uh, I don't. But but I, I feel I'm I'm running with it now, and and you know, like I said, I was very emotional, because I thought, you know, I I saw these things that, you know, these promises that I wanted, and and you know, the metaphysical truths, and now, I've I've you know, I'm getting what I want, and I know that all my life I've been calling forth for these mighty companions you know and um and now they're here and um and you know before coming here uh because i'm going to be here for two months now i thought they're going to um you know wait till they see who i really am then they're gonna kick me out again you know <laughs> and and it's been so gentle you know everybody's been so loving and um and you know there's no it's a gentle process spirit doesn't rip you out of the you know it, it just doesn't you know it's it, it it's gentle, it's loving, and it's, um, and I feel so loved here and uh, very grateful. Mm. But it's not what I expected. I thought this would be a hardcore, you know, you, we, you need to do something about your ego, <laughs> and we're going to put you in a room, in a bunk bed with 16 other people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that's that's the way my ego. You know, my ego does not like me. My ego hates me. It wants me dead. And and I was confusing the voices. So now I'm getting to experience the love. That's beautiful. And and it is beautiful. Yeah, that's about uh, how much time we have for this week. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. I had the same. I had a huge experience at the first retreat I went to and I always said the same thing. It's the same thing with 12 steps. People are like, I know it works. I just don't know how it works. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was actually seeing the demonstration because I searched 12 steps for everyone. Like I, the 30, 40 year people, those are the guys I hung out with, the big book Nazis and all that. But I didn't see a pure demonstration in any of it. 
right. until I actually found people that were living the course through David and right. you know the elders here. So that I remember seeing that and it was like, okay, this I can trust, this I can I can follow. So you you just said in thirty seconds what I tried to say in thirty <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're together. There it is. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for joining us on uh, Easter. Thank you. Easter Sunday. And um, yeah, we'll be back with the last step in a couple of weeks or we have a, we have a, yeah, three weeks. We have a weekend retreat coming up as well. And so uh, it's great to see you guys again. And yeah, I was going to say, let's bring everyone to go wide shot. Go way back. We could sit as they do their thing. Here's the family. Join us uh, this coming weekend for our, for our retreat. What are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have any shows next weekend but um we invite you to join us instead for our um monthly awakening from the dream online retreat and it's got an amazing topic coming up uh using relationships for awakening so um there's still some time to sign up for that and we just love to see you there yeah we've got lots of like participants signing up i think it's going to be a, a fantastic online retreat so yeah we look forward to joining you then mm. and i just had one last thing on my mind because it struck me so much with with your sharing jeffrey and frank can you share with us that quote true ambition what is true ambition it just is ringing in my heart yeah. right now my life true ambition is the deep desire to live usefully and walk humbly under the grace of god oh that's so beautiful yeah. So happy Easter, everybody. Welcome to the resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you very soon. Wave again. Let's love you. Let's wave. Kenny. Kenny. There's Patrick. Uh, R.A. Lapisa. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm missing>. <laughs> <laughs> um, Helena. Helena C. Jensen. Oh, oh my God. Renee. Renee. <laughs> Renee. <laughs> Is there one more screen? Yeah. Oh, there's Lucasa. Oh, I see. <laughs> Robin. Andy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>